When it comes to building vehicles and slamming cars and trucks and whatnot, there are a lot of factors, like tuck is a huge factor, and usually the more tuck, the better. So the back is tucking a whole lot, but something that overrides how much tucking that there is, is how even are the front fenders and the back fenders. So in the back, we are tucking crazy, which would be good, right? But in the front, we are tucking really good. We're tucking really nice. So now there's a problem because now we are uneven. So we want to make them match. So I have two options. Should I lower the front or should I raise the back? The path of least resistance is going to be easily raise the back to match the front. And there's a lot of factors as well. You know, so this arch kind of runs out to this body line. This body line is about five inches off the floor, I would say. This lip needs to go up about five inches, so that's going to make this kind of match more into that body line. We got this body line that we're working with. Everything is working out, and it is going to be really easy to just make two cuts, slap it together, put it back down, and we are off to the races. So let's go ahead and make that happen. And now, you're watching the Just In Time For Fall Pumpkin Spice Flavored Hemorrhoid Cream channel of YouTube. Welcome to Bodie Vision. Hey, so what is up and welcome. Thank you so much for joining me yet again on another video. So right now, let's go ahead and get started. The key with this is gonna be, I'm not gonna overcomplicate it. So we got 11 inches in the rear. We have 16 inches in the front. 11, 16, we got about a five inch difference. And this, we are just going to make a perfectly straight line. I'm gonna do the bottom one first. Then I'm going to pull it up five inches, possibly tack it together so that way we can get a good look at how it looks before we finalize it. But the idea is, with this straight panel, I'm taking out five inches, putting it back up. This is not any kind of intricate chop top, nothing too complicated, so why overcomplicate it? And also, I have this patch panel. What I would like to do is I would like to cut above this patch so that way I'm not working with many different welds on here because that makes the most sense. So let me just make my first make my first line right here. I'm gonna put this right there. Using this edge and then my speed square, I know that's 90 degrees. This can go realistically wherever I want it because by the time I take out five inches, it doesn't matter where it is or what I did. As long as I take out five inches, we are good to go. So let's see that. Mm, right there is five inches, so we got that, we got that, and then what I like to do, or what I'm going to do rather, is now measure from the top down, we are at exactly three and a quarter, I'm going to come over here and mark out three and a quarter, oh my god, that was 3.25, yeah, three and a quarter, 3.25. And then obviously the next one should be eight and a quarter, which it's dead on. So we got three and a quarter. And then we got, after the conversion rate, now we got 8.25, three and a quarter, 8.25. So we got this mark right there, that mark right there. Let's check our work, make sure that we are in fact at five inches. This is simple math, man. Simple stuff right here. And the tension of the tape is going to help me create a nice, clean, and straight line. So that's going to there, and I'm pulling it tight, and then I am laying it down. Let's get out of the grinder, cut that out, swap it up, and then we are on.
so right here you can see this is exactly where it was sitting before I mean it was sitting on the ground we got our five inches it looks a little bit more like eight to me but uh, okay so let, let's see uh, so we want to bring this level to that one this should be a pretty easy thing to weld back the bottom of this lines up with the bin we are going to have to move this bracket up and then once I get it tacked together up top I'm going to then figure out if I want to extend this arch or what I want to do down here or if I think that it looks okay as is. If you don't necessarily know what to do three or four or five steps out, you might as well just do the next step and then figure out the one after that and before you know it, you're going to have this thing done. I think this is uh, pretty cool. We're rearranging the bed, making it fit more to the body and that's what it's all about. So I'm going to go ahead and get this tacked in and then we'll see what we think. All right, so here we are at this point. You can just see the same amount in the front and the same amount in the back. Now, I was looking at a bunch of other pictures of trucks and just thinking about it. I don't know if this was exactly necessary. I don't know if it was definitely necessary to take five inches where this was completely sunk and that was, I could have maybe found some sort of a middle ground. But either way, I think it looked good before and I think it looks really good now. And this is really a way for me to do a little bit more stuff to show you. So now we have this problem right here, right? This is exactly five inches off compared to where it was because we took five inches out. So now naturally we need to put some metal back there. But the problem is I have this nice well it's not nice i wouldn't say nice nice is going to be a stretch we have this rolled section right there that i would want to continue and i would like for this arch all right man come on dog sit down sit down sit all right so i'd like for this arch to continue all the way down and the only way to do that that i found to be relatively simple is we have a straight run right here like it's arched this way then it runs straight and then it arches that way so what i want to do is cut it right about there bring that down but it doesn't only have to go down it has to go back at the same rate because this arch goes so what i'm going to do if it sounds like a bunch of mumbo jumbo i'm going to make a cut right here add five inches to it and that five inches is going to come from the five inches that i took off so that way the bottom of this will sit on the ground and then i'm going to have to make my own bead to match. I might start off with the bead roller or I might just start hammering on some metal. Either way, we gotta make something happen because it looks good there, but a lot worse here. And if it's gonna look a lot worse, we might as well have not done this at all. So let's try to make this arch work to salvage this whole process. All right, so let's get into the fun stuff right here, what we got to do and what we got going on. So as you saw, I cut this, but now if this came straight down, this arch would not continue. It would just go down. So I had to push it back a little bit. And the way that I figured out, well, here we go. This is my five inch piece. This is going to be going in there. And this black line right here, I want it to follow the body line. And then I'm going to put a bead into this piece right there. So the way that I figured out how to actually make this angle took a little bit of redneck ingenuity. So I was right here, that's at the start there. And then I made a little mark right here and then I moved it back to right there 
where I thought it was going to be shot out to just by kind of guessing, you know. So it's two and a quarter inches back. So after finding out that my difference is two and a quarter inches, I just took my five inch piece right here. I made this first measurement. Then the next measurement is two and a quarter inches longer. Drew a line to that and then cut that out. But as you can see right here, this is actually quite a bit longer but I would rather work this arch because I don't know exactly how much material the arch is going to take. And then at the end, I could just go ahead and trim this piece. So we've got this one right here, that one down there, and you can kind of see where we are going with this. So the next thing I gotta do, the next thing that I need to do is we have this arch right there. I need to replicate that arch. So that way this doesn't look like patchwork, even though it is patchwork by the time we're reworking the fender. So that's what a uh, hot rotting and building is all about. Reconstructing stuff to make it look like it should have been that way from the factory, even though we're all just messing around. So let me show you how I'm going to make this arch happen. So with putting this piece in the bead roller, this smaller bead is just going to be a baseline for me. Somewhere to start off with, something to just get the metal going in the correct direction. Now, you want to make sure if you're doing any kind of bead rolling, you know which direction that bead is going to be facing. In this case, I want it to be what I would call upward facing or it's going to be towards us instead of away from us because you only get one shot with your piece of metal just like I only had one shot to turn on my microphone when I started talking about it. So I'm just rolling it out going back and forth running it all the way off the end and you can see it's starting to tilt down a little bit just because the nature of the metal wanting to do that so I am forcing it back up just to keep all this nice and straight in line and looking good. So I just realized I forgot to turn on my microphone. So you can see what we got going on right here we already somewhat have a shape but as I mentioned this shape is a little bit too small and I would just go back and re-record it because I don't like when people say oh I forgot to do something and then they don't just redo it but I can't re-bend that piece of metal so the clip that you got is what you got so since this is a little bit too small I'm just going to grab this over here now this is just like a little body working dolly this is not at all meant to be used in the way that I'm using it but it's a thick piece of metal and it's mine and I can use whatever I want however I want to right so now the idea is I want to take this piece right here and I want to kind of widen it out I want it to become a larger arch so I'm just gonna start working the edge working this down right on here and I'm using a few of the different edges. Like this is a lot, lot wider. It gets a lot tighter over here. So if I really want it to curl down faster, I'm just going to work that edge. And again, I'm just working the metal to get it to do what I want it to do to make it work. So at this point, let's take a look. Now, something to keep in mind, the thing that I'm going for wasn't to make my new piece perfect. What I was going for was to make my new piece match the old section. For example, if you're doing a paint job where you're blending a quarter panel, for example, you want the finish and the texture of the clear coat to match the factory orange peel. You don't want the rear quarter to be perfectly glass and then have the factory paint a little bit textured. You want to go for the best blend, not the best product with the piece that you're working on, if that makes any sense. So here we go. Bam! 
bang, just like that, we got our arch back. Now, this is all crazy dented. I didn't affect this at all. This is looking a little dented, but this is all looking a little dented. The only way that we're gonna get an accurate look to see if what I did was worth it is by pulling out the truck, really stepping back and looking at the front and back together to see if you like this or if you think it was good where it was and all of this work the last day or so was completely unnecessary. But before we pull it out, I wanna get to installing those taillights in the back so that way we can get this backwards box looking a lot less backwards and looking right. So let's knock that out first. So for these taillights, I thought it was going to be real simple. All I had to do was get my holes, get them perfectly matched from the driver side to the passenger side. This is going to be for my upper light, the upper light, which is going to be red, maybe clear. I gotta look at a picture to remember, but either way. So what I had going on is I ordered this on Amazon, four and a half inch hole saw bit. Really, I got the Punani Tsunami and it's worth nothing at all. So I just used the hole saw bit to give me a little bit of reference. Then I used a really worn out cutoff wheel to get in there and get my angles and make this a really clean, nice radius. After I cut it up into some pizza slices, we then went behind and cleaned it out with a flap disc just to make it nice and wide. And with something like this, the way that these lights work, they're not bolted in there. They're only ever held in with friction of the grommet being in that hole nice and tightly. So I wanted to make sure that I was not going to make the hole wider than necessary. I'd rather whittle it down for 10, 15 minutes than to overshoot it and it ended up being perfectly fine on the top. So we just moved down to the one below. So we have two lights going on here, both modern LED. We got those lights on and those are looking good. I put those center caps on too, man. What do you think of that? Good stuff. Let's see. All right, so let's air it out. What do we think, man? Let me shut her down. All right, so here are my honest thoughts with where we are. I don't like it. There's something about it that I do not like. Now, let me go over it with you. I like our height. Our height in the front looks good. Our height in the back looks good, but what I don't like and what I didn't really realize is as I built those new pieces, right, it was going to increase the arch because infinitely as you go down this 45 degree angle, the wider the arch becomes. So what I'm thinking is, what can I do to fix my dissatisfaction for the least amount of work where I still like what's going on? So over here, I feel like we have, like I like this little triangle right here from the fender arch to the wheel. Nice little triangle comes up maybe six to eight inches off of the ground. That looks okay, I'm happy with that. But over here we have a massive gaping hole. And also you can see this piece of metal back here is pretty thick, pretty long, where we have a little tiny piece right here. So what I'm thinking is, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wanna cut right here cut along my weld that I just welded back together and then cut maybe right here four or six inches out, bring this entire thing closer to the center and then add sheet metal to that end. I'm gonna have to redo my bolts through my brackets which isn't gonna take that long at all. And what I've always found with stuff like this is it might take me a day or so to make it right but that day is gonna come and go where if I just left it, I'd be dissatisfied with something on the truck the entire time I owned the truck and I don't want to deal with that. Let's see, let's see how we're looking now. It took me about 
it does a couple hours to make all this stuff happen. Let's drop it down. What you think? You think that looks better? So here we go, just to summarize what I just did, I added about four and three quarters of an inch right here to push this arch back a little bit. I didn't like how much of a gap there was over there. Now we have this little triangle, we have this little triangle. They are pretty even. Maybe I should have done four inches rather than doing four and a half, but it looks pretty good. And all in all, let me show you all three photos right here. So this on the screen, I'm gonna do this as before. This is how it originally was. If you can see how low the arch was, how crazy tucked the back tire is. Honestly, after doing all of this work, I feel like that would have just been fine. And then here goes after part one. After part one, I think I liked after part one less than I liked before. Now we're at after part two. And to be honest, I don't know. To very begin with looked pretty good and now looked pretty good. But this was all crazy dented up on the big before. Now I'm just going to smooth it out with some filler once I grind it down a little bit more. I didn't finish weld that out just because I ran out of gas, but that's okay. We can still get the idea of what's going on. Now if we work our way around the back, we can see that we got the tail lights on. That is looking really good. So coming up really soon, we are going to get into the paint job and everything that I am going to do to finish this thing off. Also, I wanted to remind you, check out the site, new merch on there slam box shirts for this truck i still have a few on there so go ahead and check that out like this video comment subscribe do all the stuff you know what it is youtube i'll see you on the next one i'm out